I'm at Voz de Estatino with Federico. Uh, you're giving a talk today. Can you tell us a bit about your talk? Hey, hi everyone. Well, yes, I gave a talk about domain-specific language and about using domain-specific language in a pragmatic way. Because I come from an academical background and, uh, you know, there, there are a lot of ideas that are very interesting and looks very good on paper. Yeah. But when you try to apply them, they really don't work out because the return on investment don't make them worse. Yeah. So I tried to present an approach for building languages that give uh, advantages but have unlimited costs so that they are actually feasible, something that people can do even in small companies. So what's the first step when you're thinking of writing a domain-specific language, say for a particular use case? Well, the, the first step is not technical at all, it's uh, understanding the domain. So that's uh, uh, some intellectual challenge there is there because you have to understand how people think because you are building a tool to help people thinking so the first step is understanding what kind of abstraction people use in a specific domain and there, is, there are no manuals for that <laughs> but so the only thing that i can help with is that the technological part so what comes after and for these uh, there are different tools or different framework in this case, we have to use Antler, which yeah. permits to generate uh, Alexa and the parser very easily. And we have also used Kotlin to write in the code. And it's uh, our sort of superpower because it's so concise, made things so much easier and nicer to write that really helps uh, bringing down the cost of creating a new language. When do you think uh, it's a good idea to write a domain-specific language? And when is it not really worth it? Well, given I build language for a living, for me it's always a good idea to hire me to build a language. <laughs> uh, but I would say when you have domain experts that are involved in the process, I think that uh, uh, a language can be the perfect tool to make them participate in the process. I like to think that by using domain-specific language, you can have a sort of extreme agile process because you can really involve uh, users in the development they can at least give you feedback even on a daily basis yeah. because they really can understand the system they can interact with the system and so they have a completely different role we don't have the risk of developers talking once with domain experts then go away come six months after and everyone has a complete different idea of what the system was supposed to do. In these ways, they are part of the system. They can help uh, ensuring that everyone is aligned. So it's very important. Oh, so you're kind of using domain-specific language not only as a tool, but also as a way to uh, ensure that you have cons consistent communication. Yes, yes, definitely. It's, uh, it's a way to capture domain knowledge in a way that everyone can understand and contribute to it. And there are also other benefits because once you have captured this knowledge at a very high level, you can then change the technology that you use to leverage this domain-specific knowledge. A simple example, a company I used to work with, they created this language. They used to generate console application 20 years ago. Now they changed the generator, but the language stayed the same. And now they generate web application. So it's very important because the domain knowledge that is the part that has a real value can last and survive even technological evolution.